Hi everyone, it's Sandra from the Funky Pickle Thrifter. The purpose of today's video is to show some of my sales that I've gotten, I think over the last week and a half or so. I think I have sales of about $1,600. It is mostly jewelry today. I'm gonna talk about why I chose what I chose, what I paid for it, if I can remember. If anybody watching this video bought any of this stuff, I'd like to thank you very, very much for that. All right, let's get going right now. By the way, these are those earrings that I got in the $10 jewelry jar. I love them. I've worn them a couple of times already. They're pretty, right? Yeah, they're really good. They looked kind of dirty before, but see, like they're they're kind of not. Something funny about my camera or any camera, I guess, when you try to show something like the flaws really get amplified somehow. But anyway, I love them. All right, let's get started. I don't remember where I found this Trafari brooch. But I actually recognized it. Now, he is supposed to have another, well, and he's not supposed to have, but he does have a mate named Metsy. But I only have the boy. The boy's name is John. Let me see if I can enlarge it so you can see the signature. It is kind of hard to read, but it does say Trafari, and there is a crown over it. So that is their logo. That just helps you date the piece. I believe this is an Alfred Philippe piece. It's just kind of interesting, I think, like a, a face with no features, a pearl face. It's kind of a weird looking little thing. I love it. Trafari is one of the name brands I like to buy, but the pieces have to be special. What do I mean by special? Well, something that's incredibly beautiful or something that's a little bit quirky and a little bit odd. I mean, if it's 50 cents or a dollar and it says Trafari and it's in nice condition, I'm usually going to buy it no matter what. But this piece, clearly very special. And I think I sold this for $105. I took a best offer. It's really a very cool piece. I bought this lovely sterling silver cross necklace as part of a box lot at a live auction. I think I may have paid over $1,000 that day. I have not recouped my money yet. I plan on it, though. Uh, but this is a very interesting piece. So you see there it says 925, which means it's 92.5% silver. And then they put other materials in to fortify that. And it is also further marked Israel. And there's a B in a circle. Uh, not sure who that designer is, but what a lovely piece this is. Now, some of my viewers, because I did a haul on this when I first bought all like the whole stuff, the whole lot of jewelry I got. And some of my viewers told me that that is actually real ancient Roman glass inside there. It's beautiful. It looked sort of like opal a little bit, but what an interesting and beautiful piece. Sold this for 45 I bought this item at a thrift store. I think I paid a dollar or two for it. So when I saw it sitting there, it looked like that. So the first thing I knew for sure was that it was an antique. Now, if a piece is antique, it doesn't mean it's valuable for sure. But I just thought this was actually beautiful on top of it. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was broken, actually. It wasn't until I got it in the car and I started turning that bottom part that I saw that it was actually a pencil, a retractable pencil. Very interesting, very beautiful. And one thing I really loved about it is um, I believe this piece is gold filled, but you see that middle part with the leaves and the flowers. That's like tricolored gold. I have never seen that before as a, as gold filled ever. So the background part of that is yellow gold and then the leaves are green gold. And then that middle flower is pink gold, also, also called rose gold. So beautiful. Now, this was meant to be used on the end of a chatelaine. If you don't know what a chatelaine is, I'm going to put that on the screen right now. This was something that was used very prevalently in Victorian times, just so a woman could, you know, have all of her stuff with her scissors, uh, pencil, and so on. Anyway, paid a dollar or two for this. I took a best offer on this, sold it right away too, sold it for $89. I got these Peter Rabbit Easter party bags at a thrift store. I think I paid a dollar for them, but they were new in the package. There's eight in there. Look how adorable those are. And the Easter bunny is like a die cut too. So very, very nicely made, brand new, paid a dollar, sold them for 12. This item is a thrift store find. I think I paid 50 cents or a dollar for it. So the reason that I bought this is because I think it's beautiful. Let me enlarge it for you. 
Isn't that pretty? I love this. And there it is up close. Really an amazing condition. Wasn't missing any stones. There it is from the side. I just wanted to show the height on it. Isn't that pretty? And there's the mark for Danbury Mint. So on top, that's kind of a stylized D. And then there's a line. And then underneath, there's an M. So that is Danbury Mint. I discovered the name for this necklace, Dozen Red Roses, when I started doing some research. So sold this very pretty necklace for 10. I found this old ring at a yard sale. It was a dollar. I thought it was kind of weird. I didn't realize it was for Virgo until I got it home and I looked at the back of it. I actually thought it was a V for victory kind of thing. It seems like it's from the 1970s, doesn't it? You can't really see it, but it does say Virgo on top there. I can't remember what it says underneath. Oh, I think it says whatever the dates are. I don't know what the dates are. Is that September or something? Not sure. Anyway, paid a dollar for this one, sold it for 10. I think I got this item at a community sale kind of thing. I think it was a dollar or two. I sold this right away. Maybe I underpriced it a little bit, but let me enlarge it. The first thing that attracted me to this necklace when I saw it is that it is very unusual. I've never seen construction quite like this before. It's very modernist. I, I think the it just has a great sort of a jaggedy yet flowy look to it, if that makes sense. It's so cool. And it is signed right there. Marcin Tuzinski. No, I'm sorry, Marcin Tominski. So he's a prominent Polish designer. I didn't know that when I found it, but I, I did figure that out. He has a website. I think his pieces are also like on display in art galleries and stuff like that. I likely should have been asking more for this, but I noticed that one did just sell for about $50 and theirs was sterling silver. So this did sell within a matter of hours. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Not complaining. Paid a dollar or two, sold it for 50. Not bad. I have two of these puff hearts. Some people also call them puffy hearts. This one is 14 karat gold. It's just the cutest little thing. It's less than a gram, 0.88 grams. Isn't it cute? It's small. It was in really nice condition. Sometimes you see there's and they're dented and stuff, but that wasn't the case with this. Maybe price this one a little bit too low. Also, I put $55 on it with the best offer. And I think within 15 minutes or something, somebody offered me 50 and I took it. Now I have the other one up, but I did list that one a little bit higher. I think I have that one for 70. I don't know. I think 50 bucks is maybe a little bit low for a 14 karat gold puff heart, but not complaining. Paid a dollar, you know, maybe $2, sold it for 50. These two turtles sold in minutes. So again, with the low pricing, it's such a funny thing because if I put too much on something, it will sit there like for life and nobody will buy it. And then if I put it kind of low, it sells right away. But then I, I get like, I'd second guess myself. Anyway, this came as part of a lot. I think I paid $110 for some jewelry. So I'm not in the money on this. So the name brand is a very desirable name. It's called Original by Robert I think it is actually supposed to be Robert. It was founded by some New York City-based people, and they wanted to make their company sound Parisian, so that's why they came up with Original by Robert. Anyway, one of these is broken. I should point that out. Let me enlarge. Hold on. They're both really cute, and the one on the left is not missing any of its stones, which is kind of miraculous, you know, but there's the problem. So that hardware on the bottom fell off. You know, people have the know-how. They know how to fix that. I don't. Looks like it has to be soldered on and you need the piece and all of that. But there's a signature. It looks like it's on a painter's palette. There it is, original by Robert. So I'm still in the red on this particular haul. I don't think that I will be, however, because I do have a couple of higher ticket items uh, right now that are listed that I think I'm going to get the money for. Sold these, both of them together for 34 this antique item, I think, is a very neat piece of history. So, of course, Christmas tree ornaments have been around for centuries. This is a Victorian ornament. So Queen Victoria loved Christmas. She loved Christmas ornaments. And, of course, these women's magazines would print everything about her. She was sort of like the Kim Kardashian, I guess, of her day in a weird way. 
And whatever she did, people wanted to mimic. She was a trendsetter, I guess you could say. So as you can see, this is homemade. And that was typical for many Victorian ornaments. And often people would use things like tinsel or paper or lace. There is a little bit of gold brocade inside there. And then a die cut. It looks like, well, I don't know. Maybe that just came that way. Or maybe somebody cut that off of a card. Not sure. Uh, and then that top is beautiful curved glass. That's real glass. But the best thing is this. How wonderful that it has this history on it. Grandma Beddoes, I think that says, mother gave her this when she left Canada to live in the USA in the year of 1889. Isn't that charming? I was so excited when I saw this item as part of a box lot at an auction. I was very, very interested in this. I think some other people probably weren't. You know, it's not everybody's thing. Not everybody really likes antique items like this. Some people are buying jewelry lots just for the fashion. At first, I thought maybe this was some sort of a weird pendant. And then somebody pointed out to me that it is actually a Christmas tree ornament. So how sweet that somebody made that and with the information on the back. Anyhow, sold this one for $130. Oh man, I have so many antique cufflinks. These are the snap kind. Most of them that I did buy, I think last summer, or maybe two summers ago, I paid $90 for a huge lot. There were at least five pair of real gold cufflinks in there and some silver ones, some very interesting ones that I have sold individually. So I'm in the money several times over already. And now I still have dozens and dozens and dozens, and I don't have the time or the patience, so I've just been lotting them up. I sold this whole lot of six of them for $40. Let's take a closer look. Aren't those pretty? They're in very nice condition too. So some of those are mother of pearl. Definitely some of those have a deco flavor, particularly those ones with the blue and the other ones too, those sort of white ones. They were in nice shape. You see the black ones with like the kind of marbleized uh, glass, I think that is. Those had some wear to the silver tone, which I pointed out. There they are from the side. Hopefully I opened them up and took pick. Did I not? Okay. Well, I don't know why I did that. But collectors who are looking for these items, they know exactly what they are. They're the snap kind. If you don't know and you ever find these, if you try pulling them apart like this, it won't work. You, you have to like go kind of like, like that, if it makes sense. If you just go like this, like they'll, they'll never come apart. Anyway, some of these probably were come aparts with a K. That is um, and not the name brand of the cufflink. I think just the patent for the style of it and the way that they, well, come apart. Anyway, sold this lot for $40 completely in the money. I've been buying a lot of $10 jewelry jars lately, and that's where I got this bracelet. How cool. Love it. It is clearly marked. It looks like there's an N in a circle, and then it says stainless steel china. It was in very nice condition. Didn't pay a lot for it, you know, probably pennies or something like that, because I got it in a, in a big jar of jewelry. Sold this one for 13 I got these audiobooks for free. So these are MP3 CDs. There was a time when they didn't play on every player. I think they do now. They certainly will play in a computer also. So it's kind of neat because there's hours and hours of book here, audiobook, but it doesn't have all the discs. There's only one disc because an MP3 disc can fit a lot more than just a, a regular old CD. Sold this whole lot, didn't pay anything for them. $23. Look at this beautiful necklace and earring set. This is outstanding. I don't remember where I bought this. I don't think I paid a lot though. I think I think it may have been a thrift store find. Can't really remember. So when there are only two parts like this or two pieces rather, that's called a demi perer. When there are three or more that is considered a perer. So there may have been a bracelet that came with this or some a brooch or something, you know, or not. But this is kind of incredible. So that stone right there is called a briolette. It's an amazing condition. There's the back of the earrings. You can see there where they say 925 also. There they are from the side. So nicely made. They were nice and heavy too. I think that kind of glass is expensive to make. 
And there is the designer, Anatoly. So when I found this set at the thrift store, I believe I looked up Anatoly just to see, you know, what it would sell for. So let me just put some, not really exactly comps on the screen, but I'll put some stuff on the screen where you can see that when I looked it up with my phone, I knew that this was something good. I mean, I knew anyway, because it's silver. Two, it's briolettes. And three, it's gorgeous. Jewelry doesn't get much prettier than this set, I think. Sold it for $200. I found this gorgeous Nolan Miller brooch in a thrift store. And I can't remember what they originally wanted for it. Like maybe it said 50 or something. So I said to the woman, this is 50. Is that right? She goes, no, 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 no. She goes, you can just have it for 10. It's kind of an odd, <laughs> a really odd drop in price in a second's time. I thought it was maybe going to sell for more than that, but that's okay. Paid 10, sold it for 27. I got these t-shirts as part of a large underwear collection and came with t-shirts too and 90s and all kinds of stuff, which I haven't sold yet. Uh, old girdles too. I think these are maybe from the early 2000s or the 1990s. Sometimes people have an exact type of underwear or socks or t-shirts that they really, really like, and then they change it. They don't make them anymore. I don't know if that's the case with these, but I have already sold uh, many of them. I think I'm right down to the bottom, at least on how many of the t-shirts I have left to sell. I just lotted these together, sold them for 10, totally in the money. My mom and I got very, very lucky. A few weeks ago, we went to a guy's house where he had had an estate sale and we had bought a lot of jewelry from him. He was in his yard, either taking Christmas decorations down or putting them up. So we pulled over, rolled down the window and said, oh, do you remember us? And he said, come on in. I have some more jewelry for sale. We bought four pieces of gold from him for $100. That's what he asked for. That's what we gave him. I think I sold one of the rings so far for $350 last time. And now I sold this one for 190 This is actually a name brand called Orange Blossom. You kind of can see it in there. It's at 14 carat. Had some very nice weight. More than four grams of solid gold. Beautiful, beautiful wedding band. And a nice common size too, eight and a quarter. So already in the money, totally on that box of gold. Sold this for 190 a lot of my YouTube viewers helped me out with this item. This was part of a jewelry jar find. And clearly they're amazing. Clearly they're beautiful and clearly they're old too. But there was a problem. Let me enlarge. I was trying to get nice close-up photos of them so people could see there was like a lot of cool sort of texture in the glass. Not machine made, I don't think. And I'm wondering if that foil inside may be 18 karat gold possibly. I don't know. But if you take a look at the strands, there are some missing beads that probably broke through the years. So to wear it as a necklace, it wouldn't actually bug me. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. Maybe it would bother some people. And I don't think you could replace, like, you'd have to just restring the whole thing. And I don't even know how you get knots in between. But somebody could certainly use these to make something really beautiful. Really gorgeous, high end beads. Aren't they pretty? Lovely. Right there, I am just showing how big the beads are. 8.7 millimeters. I got that little tool on Amazon. I think it was $12 or something like that. It's kind of a cool thing. So got this as part of a jewelry jar, the $10 jewelry jar. Wonderful profit on this. There was 130, actually more than 130 beads here. Sold it for 70 I know I got this recently, but I don't remember where. It maybe was part of an auction. Pretty cool, though. Made out of wood. He's cute, right? Look at that face. Don't know what I paid. Sold it for 15 Here's a beautiful dragonfly pin. I've actually had this before, and I've sold it before several times. This is KJL for Avon. It says it right there. A nice size on this. Look at that. Three inches, a little bit more than three inches. And there's a signature, KJL for Avon. Not sure I got this one. Probably paid a dollar for it. Sold it for 12 A while back, I bought a lot of stuff at an estate sale. And I think I'm up to $8,000 profit just on that one sale. I did go back several times. But one thing that I bought was a lot of yarn. 
and a lot of dolls. So this doll is by Kathy Cruz. I've actually heard of this before. I have sold it before. How incredibly beautiful is that? It's from 1983. It says $165 right on that tag. Isn't she lovely? Look, she stands without a doll stand. There's how big she was, about a 10-inch doll, I guess. Isn't she pretty? Totally in the money on that whole estate sale, that whole doll lot and everything else. Sold this one for 50 I think this item is a yard sale find. I've had this for a long time. I just wasn't wearing it. I don't know why. I really do like kind of chunky jewelry like this. Look at that link. Pretty heavy too, 24 grams. Wow. There's a lobster claw clasp. So not particularly old. Very, very lovely though. Oh yeah, I ran out of batteries. <laughs> That's why the screen isn't reading, but I guess you can count how many how many millimeters that was. Probably paid a dollar or two for this one a years ago though. Sold it for 40. A while back, I bought out a collection of J. King, Desert Rose Trading, and other name brands too from an estate sale, but that's not the case here. But I'm really glad I bought that collection because I did learn a lot about J. King jewelry and kind of like where things sell. This is gorgeous. I love this turquoise. And I love the discs. They're very sort of smooth and they fit together nicely. Nice size also. Isn't that pretty? So got this at an auction as part of a larger lot. I think this is the same lot where I'm not in the money yet, but sold this necklace for 40 This cool necklace was either a thrift store find or a yard sale find. I can't remember. I think this one I got a while back too. I love how beautiful this is. And that is the Egyptian goddess Isis. Isn't that pretty? Just costume jewelry. Really nice though. It kind of looks like it's from the 70s to me, but. Not really sure how old it is. So paid a dollar or so, sold it for 10. I'm the original owner of this music book. I bought this in the 90s. I love this record, Suspending Disbelief. It's just breathtakingly beautiful. Very nice piano arrangement. So there it is. I paid $16 for it and I sold it for 30. I had just listed these Christian Dior earrings and they're in their original box, which is which is a pretty cool thing. I know just the box alone would sell. Beautiful rhinestones. There they are on my earring holder. Aren't they pretty? Nice and big, too. These are probably from the, the 80s. And then at the same time, I had these Kramer earrings up. I can't remember how much money I was asking for these, maybe 10 or something. But somebody reached out and said, I'd like to have the Christian Dior and the Kramer. What's the best price you can do? So I put them together for her and I sold both of those for 80. I don't think I paid much for them. Can't remember. So that probably means I didn't pay much for them. I got this melamine platter as part of a large, large lot of stuff I bought that I'm completely in the money on. This was new with its tag. This was very big too. Yeah, 19 inches, look at that. What a great item for Easter. Sold that for 20, totally in the money. I got this bolo at a yard sale and I think it's so cute. It's a Thunderbird. And let's see if we can take a look at that mark. Right above where it says solid copper, there's the mark for Bell Trading. And there's the measurement, just about three inches or so. A little bit of wear on the ends. I like bolos too, actually. Just kind of an interesting piece. Probably paid a dollar or less for this, sold it for 17. Here's another lot of antique cufflinks. Some very pretty colors. I love that teal blue and there's that kind of forest green, nice royal blue. Neat designs too. These are also that snap style. I took a picture of them from the side. Completely in the money on all of these cufflinks, and I have many, many more to list. Sell this lot for 40. Here's the last item for this time. I love critter jewelry. I love snake and salamander jewelry. He's very kind of expressive. He really looks like he's moving too. Gorgeous, solid sterling. 
it was nice and heavy too. We're going to take a look at the weight. Sometimes I like to put things in my hand just so you could sort of see how big it is, even though I show it here on the measurer. And there's a picture of the back. It was signed STG. I think that isn't the maker. I think that just stands for Sterling. Almost 13 grams. Isn't he cute? Can't remember where I got this. Mm, maybe part of a haul or like an, an auction haul. Can't remember. Anyway, sold this for 20. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. I hope if you are looking to flip items for a profit and you don't know that much about jewelry, I hope you learned something today. Thanks as always. I hope to see you soon. All right, I'll catch you on the next one. Hit the subscribe button and let me know what you think below. Cheers.